Hello and welcome back to Computer Cat Gaming, and today I thought it would be fun to check out the latest release of the x86 PC emulator PCEM. And some of you think that it's probably something similar to a virtual machine like VirtualBox or VMware, but it's far from it, because it's not a virtual machine at all, but a fully fledged PC emulator that emulates all hardware as accurately as possible. So it's very compatible, but at the cost of performance, due to how it's being fully emulated, whereas in a virtual machine, it lacks that accuracy, but is a lot faster since it doesn't emulate the processor. So what about it? What can it emulate? Well, it can emulate systems such as an old 8088, to a new as a Socket 7 with a Pentium MMX processor at its best with up to 300 MHz, though that is entirely limited to how powerful single core performance the hosts have on the CPU. So it's important that such processors require pretty beefy specs. For example, my i5-2500 overclocked to 4.4 GHz is capable for up to uh, Intel Mobile Pentium MMX 120 at its best. So if you got anything weaker than uh, that, you might expect being limited to around 90 MHz or something similar. So yeah, don't have too high expectations on the performance. So if you'd like to try it out, go over to pcem-emulator.co.uk and download the latest release. And for your information, so am I using PCEM V15. So things might be faster and have a lot more features in the next release when that comes out. Also, if you're going to use this emulator, you'll need some BIOS ROMs, but I don't think I can share those here. But I suggest looking over at Google or your other favorite search engines to see if you can find those through there. So, how about we start the program? First here on the configuration manager, we have the different configurations I've made. And yeah, DOS, Windows 3.1 and 98 works great. However, I had some small issues with 95, like with some drivers, but it might just be me. However, let's look at the 98 configuration I got here, which is the one I'll try some games on. The configured specs are a Socket 7 Shuttle Hot 557 motherboard with a mobile Pentium 120 MHz and also 128 MB of RAM. And for graphics I got a Diamond Stealth 3D 2000 with 4 MB of RAM and also Voodoo 2 with 4 MB. And yeah, this emulator is fully capable of emulating a Voodoo 2 graphics card which will allow us to run some 3D games from the 90s and maybe even something from the 2000s, I don't know. Oh and yeah, for sound I got a Sound Blaster 16 and yup of course that's not really a good sound card when it comes to quality but it's quite compatible which is why I'm using it but you could suggest some other sound card in the comments. Then it comes to my drive configuration, which is simply a 3.5 inch 2.88 megabyte floppy drive, a 32 gigabyte image for the hard drive, and then a C drive and a zip drive. So it's quite flexible. It's also possible to create zip drives, floppy drives, and hard drives via the program, so you don't have to use additional programs for that. There is also mouse settings, and uh, the one I felt the most accurate was the Microsoft IntelliMouse PS2 mouse, which is the most modern of the mice available. Joystick settings can also be found here, but I have not tried that yet, so I can't really say anything about that. And finally the network, and um, I went with the Realtek, which seems to be working just fine for me. And with that out of the way, let's check out Windows 98. So if we look at the top of the window we see system and under that we see hard reset, control at delayed and the shutdown buttons. And right next to that we have disk where we mount floppy and zip drives followed by the CD-ROM where it's possible to mount a CD image or the host CD-DVD drive. 
It's also possible to use cassettes, but I don't know anything about that, so I'll skip over that. Video is also right there, and audio, so you can adjust image scaling, put it to full screen, change audio latency and volume and that stuff. And at the end here we have miscellaneous, where there is screenshot, and the machine is just a performance monitor for the machine running, which is the Windows 98 machine I've got right here. So it shows the performance of the emulated machine and we can see how it performs under certain workloads during certain software and games. But now I think I've uh, teased you enough, so uh, let's actually look at the performance. And when it comes to browsing Google on Internet Explorer and uh, doing tasks such as browsing the Explorer and painting, it does alright with some hiccups here and there like when opening a folder or uh, yeah, starting a program, there can be some hiccups, but it's mostly fine. So let's try an action old game. And uh, what better way to rewind time to back to the 90s than playing Time Commando. And at first glance it seems that the emulator isn't handling at all, but with further inspection, so did I notice it was because of that, because how the game was being played off the host CD drive. With uh, negatively affected the performance. So I ripped the game from the disk onto a CD image and then it ran the way it should have. And looking side by side I think it's quite obvious. And yeah this is a reoccurring problem with the DVD CD drive which quite bottlenecks. It can't really utilize the real uh, DVD CD drive which is kind of a bummer but Hopefully it might get fixed in the future, so let's hope on that. So next off I tried Lego Racers, and due to how I got the print when there is no copy protection in the software, I could simply play it without any disc present, so the performance was quite stable, except that I was playing on a 128 MHz MMX CPU, which is quite a bit slower than the 166MHz MMX CPU the system requirement is suggesting, but it's a success in my book. I then after tried the first The Sims and I tried with and without CD. And uh, with the CD, it took quite a while to start due to the bottleneck between the host CD and the emulated CD. But it worked and I saw no difference with or without the CD in game. But when it loads the music, the CD can make it stutter a little bit for a tiny moment. That's not really the biggest issue because the biggest issue is the CPU speed alone, which is at 120 MHz and the game requires at least a 233 MHz, so that's not really doable. But at least it didn't really slow down the emulation itself, it was just the emulator's the CPU being slow, so the emulator did pretty good. Oh, and I tried Sim Tower and Duke Nukem 3D Atomic Edition, and it ran perfectly, which is no surprise. Though Sim Tower might have been a little fast, but it ran so it was playable. Another old classic I tried was Baldur's Gate, which worked as expected, though the intro movie is very laggy if run directly off the host uh, CD drive, but when running off the image it was very fast and uh, could almost render the whole intro movie perfectly. Tomb Raider also ran great without issues and seemed to look normal. Though I don't though I haven't played much of this game, but I didn't notice any problem. And the final game I tried was Delta Force Land Warrior, but I clearly didn't look at the system requirements because it requires at least a 350 MHz painting too. So that's a no-go for me. 
And uh, that was some old games running on the PC EM emulator. And well, if you got interested, I would definitely recommend that you give it a go, since this is definitely an interesting way of playing older games and software without relying on an old computer. But that was it for today, and see you sometime soon. Bye bye.